It all comes down to this. Tomorrow afternoon is the deadline for this year's Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. And over the course of last year, I've taken these 17 images that I think are worthy of being shortlisted for the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. But per competition guidelines, only 10 of them can be submitted. So in today's episode, we're going to be going through all of the images I've captured during this series and deciding which ones have the best chance of winning this prestigious competition. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So let's just cut straight to the chase then and get rid of the photos that I know have very little next to zero chance of ever being shortlisted for the competition. Not just in this year's edition, but any of the previous competitions. So I think the first one to go will be the moon image. Now this was captured with my Celestron 11 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. I'm quite happy with it, but if we're being completely honest, the only reason it's featured in this series is because I needed to tick the box of submitting a moon image. Now I used to be obsessed with imaging the moon, but recently I've moved on to focusing on using smaller telescopes like refractors and imaging deep sky objects instead. So this year I have definitely had less of a focus on our lunar companion, but next year I am going to invest in a much bigger colossal telescope, maybe even a 16 inch Dobsonian telescope that I'm then going to solely use for imaging the planets and our moon. So although it's going to be chopped for this year's submission, next year I'm going to try 10 times harder to actually enter something worthwhile into this category. Then moving on to a category in which I've just captured far too many entries altogether and that is the galaxies category. Right, now this one might raise some eyebrows because I'm gonna get rid of some of the better quality images of galaxies and they're instead gonna be replaced with images that were taken with lower budget setups. Because as I've said since the beginning, this competition isn't just based on the expense of your equipment, it's based on the quality of your image and the story behind it. And I think the story behind this image is particularly astonishing. And that's because this image was not taken with a fancy telescope. In fact, it was taken with my mobile phone. And the fact that we're now reaching a point where you can image entire galaxies with your own mobile phone is just incredible and it still blows my mind. So I think we're asking a lot for this to be featured in the book, but I'm going to treat this as my wild card. Yeah, I'm sure when you looked at the 17 images at the start of this episode and you tried to think in your head which ones you'd get rid of, this is probably one of the first ones to go. But I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to hope for the best. Which does mean goodbye to the Andromeda Galaxy, imaged with the ZWO FF80 telescope, and goodbye to the Cartwheel Galaxy, imaged with one of the remote telescopes hosted by iTelescope. And then this one was a hard decision where I had to choose between either the submission of M81 and M82, the mosaic panel image, or the antennae galaxies image and I've gone for the Interline Galaxy just because I think it's more likely to be featured in the competition because the obvious title for the image is Galaxies in Love and for the casual reader who buys this book because they have a low level interest in space and find certain aspects of it quite poetic and beautiful this ticks all of their boxes. The collision, the merger between these two galaxies forms one of the most beautiful shapes known to man so I think this has a better chance of being featured as opposed to the two galaxies that feature in the other image. I'm also going to go ahead with a submission of Attenborough's galaxy. That's for two reasons. One, this is a target that is going to be very rarely submitted, and two, I think the story behind it is enough to make it relatively interesting. The fact that I've pointed a telescope at the coordinates to correspond to the letters in someone's name is quite interesting, because in most scenarios it turns up absolutely nothing. But in this case, we can see a very lovely galaxy parallel to a beautiful blue star. I am going ahead with my Aurora submission, and that is the image of me with my arms out, and it's going to be titled The Aurora and Milky Way in my arms because I couldn't think of any better title than that. Is this the best image of the aurora you've ever seen? No, in fact it's likely it's not even the best image of the aurora you've seen today. But it took me a lot of effort, a lot of effort to capture this image. Like the trials and tribulations that me and my little brother had to go through in order to capture this were excruciating. And then moving on to the categories skyscapes and people in space. I feel like a lot of images that you submit into either one of these categories are very much interchangeable between the two. So the one I'm going to stick with is the star trail image. I'm going to title it Don't Go Chasing Star Falls. I wonder if a title of a picture has ever been so good that that alone has got the image featured in a book. That certainly won't be the case for this image, but I just wonder if that's ever been a case. Someone's ever made a really good astronomy pun and they've just gone, oh, we've got to put it in there. Image is crap, but <laughs> I tell you what, that title tickled me. 
Then we have the stars and nebulae category, and for this one I produced some of the best images of the entire series, and as I said in the very beginning, this is the hardest category to be shortlisted for, and certainly the one that people dedicate the most amount of time towards. I regularly see images featured in this category that have roughly 20 hours worth of exposures taken with multiple different filters, so if you want to be in this category you have to have taken something really special, which is why I'm going to go ahead with submitting NGC 1555, or as I like to refer to it as the devil in disguise. Which sadly means I'm going to be abandoning the images of the Pleiades and the Horsehead and Flame Nebula, and that is because these are some of the most commonly imaged targets. And with my images, they were about one hour's worth of exposures at best, so I feel like a lot of astrophotographers have dedicated a lot more time towards these objects and taken even better images, so I don't stand much hope if I submit one of these. I am going to go forward with the submission of CG4 otherwise referred to as God's Hand. And that's because until fairly recently, I wasn't even aware that this existed. And I think it's an incredibly unique deep sky object. Then we have the R Sun category. And this is one of the submissions that I'm more confident about. And that's because it's a group submission and it's using one of the most powerful amateur remote solar observatories. So you can actually use the telescope that I used to capture this image for yourself. And the fact that I got access to it is because I was working alongside some of the chaps that are running the entire program. And they essentially gave me free reign to capture any images I liked but when it came down to the final decision of which image was going to be submitted to the competition inevitably I didn't go for the image I captured because one of the other members of the team Duncan his image was actually a lot better than the one I've captured so for submitting this image I'm going to be putting down five different people's names so yeah, a group submission. Then finally, for the last category, I know I haven't done these in the order that I did them on the whiteboard, but we have planets, comets, and asteroids. And in this category, I submitted two submissions. One is with the Seastar S50 Smart Telescope, which costs less than $500, and it features the Crab Nebula and the asteroid Vesta. And I think what's really unique about this image is the fact that it's not just a stationary point of light, this asteroid, you can actually see it moving across space. And that's always been a part of astrophotography that's really excited me. It's being able to capture the universe in motion. And as I said in the episode in which we capture this image, I cannot believe you're able to do this with a telescope that costs less than $500 that's placed on your windowsill. That's absolutely crazy. It is a huge testament as to what you are capable of capturing nowadays as an amateur astrophotographer. So that's another one in which the image quality itself is relatively poor but the story behind how it's captured and the equipment it's captured with is phenomenal and then lastly we have my favorite image captured of the entire series and it features the dwarf planet series so in this image you can see the galaxy m100 otherwise referred to as the blow dry galaxy and four very bright points of light which is actually the same object i've just stacked multiple pictures in this same shot to make it appear multiple times that bright point of light is the dwarf planet series which is about a trillion times smaller than the blow dry galaxy and yet despite this it is still able to outshine it what happened in this image was there was a very rare alignment between the two that i managed to capture for the use of a remote telescope located in chile right so there we go those are my final 10 images that i'm going to be submitting into this competition the goal since the very beginning of the series has been to just have at least one image featured in a very prestigious book i'm very realistic about my expectations i know none of these images are ever going to feature on the cover very unlikely for many of them to even be the winner of a category but just to be in there to be featured in this group amongst some of the most talented astrophotographers on the planet would be a huge testament so yeah the next episode will be me talking about the results of the competition good or bad so i am very happy with the submissions that i captured this year i think 17 is a very healthy number the next year i'm going to try and capture at least 25 different targets that are worthwhile being submitted to the competition which is really exciting i just want to take a moment to thank all of you that have stayed with me throughout the journey of this series and watched every single episode commented and liked each of the videos and perhaps even shared it with people that you think might also find it interesting we are now at the very end of the journey and yeah all that's left to do now is find out if i won yeah <laughs> The last time I entered the competition would have been 10 years ago when I got disqualified, but I was still invited to go down to the award ceremony. I don't think they do that anymore. I don't think they host an award ceremony and have all the astrophotographers turn up, which is such a huge shame, because what a time to meet all of your idols. What a time to meet all of your fellow astrophotographers. I remember sitting in the planetarium and they'd show everyone's images per category and then eventually announce the highly commended, the runner up and the winner, and you'd go up and collect your prize. That was really cool. So if they don't do that this year, if they don't do it ever again that'd be a huge shame because even at 17 i remember that being one of the coolest nights of my life based on what i saw last year they did 
a live stream to announce it, but I'm pretty sure it was like a pre-recorded video that was live streamed to announce the winners, which is a shame because I think it's a really exciting moment. So yeah, there we have it. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. I hope you are also keeping your fingers crossed for me as well, because I think that might help. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.